Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pulpit Hour. What a pleasure, what an honor to be here. Yes, 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 yes. What a, <laughs> what a privilege and an honor to be here again today. It's a beautiful day. It's the day that the Lord has made. So welcome. Get somebody on board. Get your friend. Get your co-worker. Get your mother, your father, your enemies. I always say that too because the Bible says that we should love on our enemies. Okay, no aiding on this forum. Uh -uh. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, you're welcome to be a part of celebrating the word of God and publishing the word of God, Pulpit Hour. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we will start in a, after this song. Yes, Agatha. God bless you, my darling. Make sure you like and share and tag this because we need to hear the words. So I have this song. Um, the word of God is sufficient unto me. 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 So wherever part of the world that you're watching from, we send you greetings. We say shalom. We say the Lord's peace be with you. We pray God give you his peace today. The world is going through the earth. I say is going through birth pangs. And the Lord give us grace and the Lord keep us all in his mighty shadow. Let us abide under his shadow. The word of God is, is, is where it is. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. The word of God is it. it, is it. So continuing on pulpit hour today, we continue in the book of Obadiah. Obadiah. So I read. So listen in, listen in, listen in. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Judy, for hanging out with us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. For all those who are hanging out with us, God bless you. God bless you real good. God bless you. We love you. And we are praying for everyone. Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard tidings from the Lord. And a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up. Let us rise up against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You will live in the clefts of the rock whose dwelling is high, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground. Though you soar, I loved like the eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, thence I will bring you down, says the Lord. If themes thieves came to you, if plunderers by night, how would you have been destroyed? Will they not steal only enough for themselves? If grape gatherers came to you, will they not leave gleanings? How Esau has been pillaged, his treasures sought after. All your allies have deceived you. They have driven you to the border. Your confederates have prevailed against you. Your trusted friends have set a trap under you. There is no understanding of it. Will I not on that day, says the Lord, destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount Esau? And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Teman, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. For the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, 
on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them, but you should not have gloated over the day of your brother in the day of his misfortune. You should not have rejoiced over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. You should not have boasted in the day of distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of his calamity. You should not have gloated over his disaster in the day of his calamity. You should not have looted his goods in the day of his calamity. You should not have stood at the parting of the ways to cut off his fugitives. You should not have delivered up his survivors in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done unto you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, all the nations round about shall drink, they shall drink and stagger, and shall be as though they had not been. But in Mount Zion shall be those that escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survival to the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. Those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of Shephelah, the land of the Philistines, they shall possess the land of Ephraim, and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles in Allah, who are of the people of Israel, shall possess Phoenicia as far as Zarephath. And the exiles of Jerusalem, who are in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the Negev. Saviors shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Hallelujah! The kingdom shall be the Lord's. The book of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amattiah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose and flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare and went on board, to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the weirs that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it where the ship, to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, well, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we do not perish. And they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots and the Lord fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, tell us 
on whose account this evil has come upon us? What is your occupation? Whence do you come? What is your country? And of what people are you? Hmm. And he said to them, I am an Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, what is this that thou have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then, said, then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. Tempestuous, he said to them, take me and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me this, that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men roared hard to bring the ship back to land. But they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried to the Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it has pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Mm. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, is God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of shore, I cried, and thou didst hear my voice, for thou didst cast me into the deep into the heart of the seas. And the flood was round about me, all thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from thy presence. How shall I again look upon thy holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was round about me. Hallelujah. Weeds were, were wrapped around about my head as the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet thou didst bring up my life, bring up my life from the pit. O oh Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to thee into thy holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to, to thee. What I have vowed, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. 
Now, Nineveh was a great city, three days journey in breath. Journey, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And Nineveh shall be going a day's journey. And he cried, yet 40 days. And Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. Hallelujah. And they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then Titus reached the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Hmm. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not be fed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them cry mightily to God. Yea, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows? God may yet repent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we perish not. Hmm. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them. And he did not do it. Hallelujah for the word. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah for your word. But it displaced Jonah exceedingly. And he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made this to flee to Tashish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repentance of evil. Therefore now, O oh Lord, take my life from me. I beseech thee, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what will become of the city. <laughs> and the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. Hmm. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, <laughs> God, oh God, God appointed a sultry east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plot? And he said, I do want to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow? 
<laughs> which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should, you, should not I pity Nineveh, that great city? in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle the book of Micah the word of the lord came to Micah of Meresheth in the days of Jotham uh, Ahaz and Ezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear you, people, peoples, all of you. I love that. Let me do that again. Hear you, peoples, all of you. Hearken, O earth and all that is in it. And let the Lord God be a witness against you. For the Lord from his holy temple, for behold, the Lord is coming forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth and the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will be cleft like wax before the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. All this is for the transgression of Jacob. Hmm. And for the sins of the house of Israel, what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what is the sin of the house of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? Hmm. Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap in the open country, a place of planting vineyards, and I will pour down a stones into the valley and uncover our foundations. All our images shall be beaten to pieces. All our hires shall be burned with fire and all our idols I will lay waste. Far, far from the higher of a harlot, she gathered them. And to the higher of a harlot, they shall return. For this, I will lament and wail. I will go stripped naked. I will make a lamentation like the jackals and mourning like the ostriches. For our wound is incurable and it has come to Judah. It has reached to the gate of my people to Jerusalem, tell it not in Gath, weep not at all in Bethlehem, Harafas, Afra. Roll yourselves in the dust, pass on your way in inhabitants of Shepha, in nakedness and shame, the inhabitants of Zana. Do not go forth the wailing of Beth Ezel. Do not go forth. The wailing of Beth Ezel shall take away from you a standing place. For the inhabitants of Maroth wait anxiously for good because evil has come down from the Lord hmm. to, the gates of, to the gates of Jerusalem. Harness the steads of the chariots, inhabitants of Lachish. You were the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion. For in you were found the transgressions of Israel. Therefore, you shall give parting gifts to Moresheth Gath. The houses of Akshvib shall be a deceitful thing to the kings of Israel. I will again bring a conqueror upon you, inhabitants of Meresha, the glory of Israel shall come to Adulam. Make yourselves bad and cut off your hair for the children of your delight. Make yourself as bad as the eagle for they shall go from you into exile. Hmm. 
Woe to those who devise wickedness and walk evil upon their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in the power of their hand. Hmm. They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them away. They oppress a man in his house and his house, a man and his inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, against this family, I am devising evil, for which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk heartily, for it will be an evil time. In that day, they shall take up a thought, a taunt, sunk against you. And wail with bitter lamentations and say, we are utterly ruined. He changes the portions of my people. How? He removes it from them. How? He removes it from them. Among our captives, he divides our fields. Therefore, you will have none to cast the line by, it, by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. This grace will not overtake us. Verse six, do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. This grace will not overtake us. Okay, we will see. Should this be said, O house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord impatient? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? But... You rise against my people as an enemy. You strip the rope from the peaceful, hmm, from those who pass by trustingly with no thought of war. The women of my people you drive out from their pleasant houses. From their young children you take away my glory forever. Arise and go, but this is no place to rest because of uncleanness that destroys with a grievous destruction. If a man should go about and utter lies, and utter wind and lies, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink, he will be the preacher of these people. Verse 11. If a man should go about and utter wind and lies, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink, he will be the preacher for this people. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold like a flock in his pasture, a noisy multitude of men. He who opens the bridge will go up before them. They will break through the pass, through and past the gate, going out by it. Their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. And I said, hear you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel. Is it not for you to know justice? You who ate the good and love the evil? 
who tear the skin off of my people and their flesh from off their bones? Who eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them and break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a kettle, like flesh in a cauldron? Then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time because they have made their deeds evil. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets. Who lead my people astray? Who cry peace? when they have something to eat. But declare war against him. Who puts nothing into their mouth? Therefore, it shall be night to you without vision and darkness to you without divination. The sun shall go down upon the prophets and the day shall be black over them. This will be disgraced, and the diviners shall put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel who abhor justice and pervert all equity. Who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong? Hmm. Its heads give judgment for a bribe. Its priests teach for hire. Its prophets divine for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord in the midst of us? No evil shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. Micah chapter 3, I just read. Micah it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. The people shall flow to it and many nations shall come and say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways and we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall decide for strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken.
for all the people's work, each in the name of his God. Hmm. But, but, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God forever and ever. <laughs> in that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame. Hallelujah. And gather those who have been driven away and those whom I have afflicted and the lame, I will make the remnant and those who were cast off a strong nation and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from this time forth and forevermore. Revelation, hallelujah. The book of Revelation right there in my car. Ooh, glory to Jesus. And you, O tower of the flock, heal of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. The former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in you? As your counselor perished, <laughs> that pangs have seized you like a woman in travail, wreath and groan, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now you shall go forth from the city and dwell in the open country. You shall go to Babylon. There you shall be rescued. Amen. There, the Lord will redeem you, amen, from the hand of your enemies. Now, many nations are assembled against you, saying, let her be profaned, and let our eyes gaze upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan. Oh, glory, that he has gathered them as sheep to the threshing floor. Arise and fresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make your own iron. I will make your own iron and your hoofs bronze. You shall beat in pieces many people and shall devote their gain to the Lord. Their wealth to the Lord of the whole earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now, you are worth about with a wall. Siege is laid against you. With a rod, they strike upon the cheek, the ruler of Israel. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come for me. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in travel has brought forth from brought forth, then the rest of his brethren shall return. Hallelujah. Shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. He shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God. And they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. I will give a dance, 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 I will give a dance. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. And this shall be peace 
when the Assyrian comes into our land and treads upon our soil, that we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. They shall rule the land of Assyria moving forward with the sword. Ah, and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. And they shall deliver us from the Assyrian. When it comes into our land and treads within our border, then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many peoples. Like dew from the Lord, like showers upon the grass, which tarry not for men, nor wait for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations. Wow. In the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which when it comes, it goes through, treads down and tears in pieces, and there is none to deliver. Your hand shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And in that day, says the Lord, I will cut off your horses from among you and will destroy your chariots. And I will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your strongholds. And I will cut off sorceries from your end and you shall have no more soothsayers. And you shall have no more soothsayers. <laughs> Soothing. Mm -hmm. And I will cut off your images and your pillars from among you. And you shall bow down no more to the work of your hands. And I will root out your Asherim from among you and destroy your cities. And in anger and wrath, I will execute vengeance upon the nations that will not obey. Who Jesus? Who Jesus? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Hmm. Have mercy, Lord. Oh, have mercy, Lord. Hear what the Lord says. Arise. Plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord. Hmm. God's got a controversy and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people. And he will contend with Israel. Oh my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage. And I sent you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people. Remember what Balak, king of Moab devised? And what Balaam, the son of Bera, answered him? And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal? that you may know the saving acts of the Lord? With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Hmm. With calves a year old? Will the hand, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With 10,000 of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
What does the Lord require of you? Mm. He has showed you, oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The voice of the Lord cries to the city and it is sound wisdom to fear thy name. Hear, O tribe, an assembly of the city. Can I forget the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? And the scant measures that is accursed? Shall I acquit the man with wicked scales? And with a bag of deceitful weights? Your rich men are full of violence. Your inhabitants speak lies. And their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore, I have begun to smite you, making you desolate because of your sins. Hmm. You shall eat, but not be satisfied. And there shall be hunger in your inward parts. You shall put away, but not save. Hmm. 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 And what you say, I will give to the sword. Hmm. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread olives, but not anoint yourselves with oil. You shall tread grapes, but not drink wine. For you have kept the statues of Omri and all the works of the house of Ea. And you have walked in their councils that I may make you a desolation and your inhabitants a heathen, ye sin. So you shall bear the scorn of the peoples. Hmm. Woe is me, for I have become as when the summer fruit has been gathered, as when the vintage has been gleaned. There is no cluster to eat, no first ripe fig, which my soul decides. The godly man has perished from the earth, and there is none upright among men. There is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. And each hunts his brother with a net. Their hands are bound, are upon, their hands are upon what is evil, to do it diligently. The prince and the judge ask for a bribe. And the great man utters the evil desires of his soul. Thus, they weave it together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright of them a thorn edge. The day of their watchman, of their punishment has come. Now their confusion is at hand. Put no trust in a neighbor. Have no confidence in a friend. Guard the doors of your mouth. From her who lies in your bosom. For the son treats his father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. But as for me, 
I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not over me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light. I shall behold his deliverance. Then my enemy will see and shame will cover her who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will glot over her. Now she will be trodden under like the mare of the streets. A day for the building of your walls. In that day, the boundary shall be far extended. In that day, they will come to you from Assyria to Egypt and from Egypt to the river, from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. But the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants for the fruit of their doings. Shepherd them, shepherd thy people with thy staff, with thy staff, the flock of thy inheritance who dwell alone in a forest, in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, I will show them marvelous things. The nations shall see and be ashamed of all their might. They shall lay their heads on their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like the crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their strongholds. They shall turn in dread to the Lord, our God. They shall turn in dread to the Lord, our God, and they shall fear because of thee. Who is a God like thee, pardoning iniquity, hallelujah, and passing over transgressions for the remnant of his inheritance, he does not retain his anger forever, hallelujah, because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot, hallelujah. Thou will, not, thou will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham as thou hast sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The book of Nahum. An oracle concerning Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum of Elkosh. The Lord is a jealous God and avenging. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. Ooh, I'm not an enemy of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is slow to anger and great of might. The Lord will by no means clear the guilty. Hallelujah. His way is in whirlwind and storm. <laughs> and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. It dries up all the rivers. Bashan and Carmel wither. The bloom of Lebanon fades. The mountains quake before him. 
The hills melt. The earth is laid waste before him. The world and all that dwell therein. Hmm. Who can stand before the indigna his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire and the rocks are broken asunder by him. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is a stronghold. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a full end of his adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. What do you plot against the Lord? What do you plot against the Lord? He will make a full end. He will not take vengeance twice on his foes, <laughs> according one way, one time. Oh, hallelujah. Uh uh. <laughs> one time, Lord. Like entangled thorns, they are consumed. Like dry stubble. Did one not come out from you who plotted evil against the Lord and cancelled villainly? Thus says the Lord, though they be strong and many they will be cut off and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break his yoke from off you and will burst your, your bonds asunder. The Lord has given commandment about you. No more shall your name be, per be per perpetuated from the house of your gods, I will cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make your grave for you a vow. Ooh. Behold, on the mountains of the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Behold on the mountains, the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Keep your feasts, O Judah. Fulfill your vows. For never again shall the wicked come against you. He is utterly cut off. The shatter has come up against you. Hallelujah. Okay, welcome, 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 welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yes, ma'am. Nahum, chapter two. The shatter has come up against you. Man, the rampants, watch the road. Gird your loins, collect all your strength. <laughs> For the Lord is restoring the majesty of Jacob as the majesty of Israel. For plunderers have stripped them and ruined their branches. The shield of his mighty man is red. His shoulder, um, soldiers are clothed in scarlet. The chariots flash like fire when mustard in array. The chargers pranks. The chariots rage in the streets. They rush to and fro through the squares. They gleam like torches. They dart like lightning. The officers are summoned. They stumble as they go. They hasten to the wall. The mantelet is set up. The river gates are opened. The balance is the palace is in dismay. His mistress is stripped. She is carried off. And maidens lamenting, mourning like doves and beating their breasts. Nineveh is a pool. Is like a pool whose waters run away. Halt! Off they cry, 
but none turns back. Plunder the silver, plunder the gold. There is no end of treasure or wealth of every precious thing. Desolate, desolate and ruin. Hurts, faint and knees tremble. Anguish is on all loins. All faces grow pale. Hmm. Where is the lion's den? The cave of the young lions, where the lion brought his prey. Where is corpse where? With none to disturb. The lion tore enough for his wealth and strangled prey for his lioness. Mm -hmm. He filled his caves with prey and his dens with torn flesh. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will burn you, chariots, and I will burn your chariots in smoke, and the sword shall, be, shall devour your young lions. I will cut off your prey from the earth, and the voice of your messengers shall no more be heard. Woe to the bloody city, all full of lice and booty, no end to the plunder, the crack of whip and rumble of wheel, galloping horse and bounding chariot, horsemen charging, flashing sword and glittering spear, host of slain, heaps, heaps of corpses, dead bodies without end. They stumble over the bodies and all for the countless aloe trees of the allot, graceful and deadly charms who betrays nations with our hollow trees and peoples with our charms. Hmm. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts, and will lift up your skirts over your face. And I will let nations look on your nakedness and kingdoms on your shame. I will throw fields at you, at you and treat you with contempt and make you a gazing stock. And all who look on you will, will shrink from you and say, Wasted is Nineveh. Who will be mourn her? When shall I seek comforters for her? Are you better than Thebes that sat by the Nile with water around her, a rampant a sea, and water a wall? Ethiopia was her strength. Egypt too and that with, without limit. Put and the Libyans were her helpers, yet she was carried away. She went into captivity. Her little ones were dashed in pieces at the end of every street. For our honored men, lots were cast, and all our great men were bound in chains. Hmm. You also will be drunken. You will be dazed. You will seek a refuge from the enemy. All your fortresses are like fig trees <laughs> with first ripe figs. If shaking they fall, yes, into the mouth of the eater. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus. Behold, your troops are women in your midst. Hallelujah. Behold, your troops are women in your midst. Behold, your troops are women in your midst. The gates of your land are wide open to your foes. Fire has devoured your bars. Draw water from the siege. Strengthen your forts. Go into the clay. Tread the mortar. Take hold of the brick mold. There will the fire devour you. The sword will cut you off. It will devour you like the locust. Multiply yourselves like the locusts. Mm -hmm. Multiply like grasshoppers. You increased your merchants more than the stars of the heavens. The locust spreads his wings and flies away. Your princes are like grasshoppers. Your scribes like clouds of locusts settling on the fences. In a day of cold, when the sun rises, they fly away. No one knows where they are. Your shepherds are asleep, O king of Assyria. Your nobles slumber. Your people are scattered on the mountains with none to gather them. 
There is no assuaging your hurt. Your wound is grievous. All will hear the news of you, clap their hands over you, for upon them has not come your unceasing evil. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Father, have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. The book of Habakkuk. What chapter? I didn't hear you. Yeah, start from the book of Habakkuk. One? Yeah. Okay. Habakkuk chapter one. This is the burden that Habakkuk the prophet received in a vision. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not hear. I'll cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me see iniquity? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife is going on. Strife is ongoing and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked helm in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and observe be utterly astounded, for I am doing a walk in your days that you will never believe, even if someone told you. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that ruthless and impetuous nation which marches through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are dreaded and feared. From themselves, they derive justice and sovereignty. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves of the night. Their horsemen charge ahead, and their cavalry comes from afar. They fly like a vulture, swooping down to devour. All of them come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like the east wind. They gather prisoners like sand. They scoff at kings and make rulers an object of corn. They make rulers an object of scorn. They laugh at every fortress and build up siege ramps to seize it. Then they sweep by like the wind and pass on through. They are guilty. Their own strength is their God. Are you not from everlasting, O oh Lord, my God, my only one? We will not die, O oh Lord. You have appointed them to execute judgment. O oh rock, you have established them for correction. Your eyes are too pure to look upon evil and you cannot tolerate wrongdoing. So why do you tolerate the faithless? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? You have made men like the fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler. The foe pulls all of them up with a hook. He catches them in his dragnet and gathers them in his fishing net. So he rejoices gladly. Therefore, he sacrifices to his dragnet and burns incense to his fishing net. For by these things, his portion is sumptuous and his food is rich. Will he therefore empty his net and continue to slay nations without mercy? Chapter two. I will stand at my guard post 
and station myself on the ramparts. I will watch to see what it will say to me and how I shall answer when corrected. Then the Lord answered me, write down this vision and clearly inscribe it on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the vision awaits an appointed time. It testifies of the end and does not lie. Though it lingers, wait for it, since it will surely come and will not delay. Look at the proud one, his soul is not upright, but the righteous will live by faith and wealth indeed betrays him. He is an arrogant man, never at rest. He enlarges his appetites like sure. And like death, he is never satisfied. He gathers all the nations to himself and collects all the people as his own. Will not all of these take up a taunt against me? Speaking with mockery and delusion. Speaking with mockery and derision. Woe to him who amasses what is not his and make himself rich with many loans. How long will this go on? Will not your creditors suddenly arise and those who disturb you are woken? Then you will become their prey because you have plundered many nations. The remnant of the people will plunder you because of your blood shed against man and your violence against the land, the city and all their dwellers. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain to place his net on high and escape the harm of disaster. You have plotted shame for your house by cutting off many people and forfeiting your life. For the stones will cry out from the wall and the rafters will echo from the woodwork. Woe to him who built a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by iniquity. Is it not indeed from the Lord of hosts that the labor of the people only feeds the fire? and the nations weary themselves in vain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wine skin until they're drunk in order to gaze at their nakedness. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. You too must drink and expose your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's hand, the cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you. And utter disgrace will cover your glory. For your violence against Lebanon will overwhelm you. And the destruction of animals will terrify you. Because of your blood shed against men and your violence against the land, the city, and all their dwellers. What use is an idol that a craft man should carve it, or an image, a teacher of lies? For its maker trusts in its own creation. He makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, awake, or to silent stone, arise. Can it give guidance? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet there is no breath in it at all. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3. This is a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet, according to Sigiona. O oh Lord, I have heard the report of you. 
I stand in awe, O Lord, of your deeds. Revive them in these years. Make them known in these years. In your wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His radiance was like the sunlight. Rays flashed from his hand where his power is hidden. Plague went before him and fever followed in his steps. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations. The ancient mountain crumbled. The perpetual hills collapsed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of cushion in, dis in distress. The curtains of medians were trembling. Were you angry at the rivers, O Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode on your horses? On your chariots of salvation, you brandished your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountain saw you and quaked. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared with his voice and lift its hand on high. Sun and moon stood still in their places. At the flash of your flying arrows, at the brightness of your shining spear, you marched across the earth with fury. You threshed the nations in wrath. You went forth for the salvation of your people to save your anointed. You crushed the head of the house of the wicked and stripped him from head to toe. With his own, with his own spear, you pierced his head. When his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though ready to secretly devour the weak. You trample the sea with your horses, shunning the great waters. I heard and trembled within. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay entered my bones. I trembled where I stood. Yet I must wait patiently for the day of distress to come upon the people who obeyed us. Though the fig tree does not burn and no fruit is on the vines, though the olive crops and the field produce no food, though the sheep are cut off from the fold and no cattle are in the stalls, yet I will exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like those of a deer. He makes me walk upon the heights. Habakkuk chapter three, Habakkuk chapter four. Oh, that was Habakkuk chapter three. Now we go to Zephaniah chapter one. This is the word of the Lord that came to Zephaniah, son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amara, the son of Ezekiah, in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will completely sweep away everything from the face of the earth. I will sweep away man and beast. I will sweep away the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the idols with their wicked worshipers. I will cut off mankind from the face of the earth. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all who dwell in Jerusalem. I will cut off from this place every remnant of Baal, the names of the idolaters and pagan priests, those who bow on the rooftop to worship the hosts of heaven, those who bow down and swear by the Lord, but also swear by Milcom and those who turn back from following the Lord. 
neither seeking the Lord nor inquiring of him. Verse seven, be silent in the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is near. Indeed, the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the priests, the sons of the king, and all who are dressed in foreign apparel. On that day, I will punish all who live over the threshold, who fill the house of their master with violence and deceit. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fish gate, a wall from the second district, and a loud crashing from the hills. Well, O dwellers of the hollow, for all your for all your merchants will be silenced. All who weigh upon silver will be cut off. And at that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men settled in complacency, who say to themselves, the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. They are well to be plundered, and their houses laid waste. They will build houses, but not inhabit them, and plant vineyards, but never drink their wine. Verse 14, the great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord, then the cry of the mighty will be beaten. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of destruction and dissolution, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of on blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the high corner towers. I will bring such distress on mankind that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them. On the day of the Lord's wrath, the whole earth will be consumed by the fire of his jealousy. For indeed, it will make a sudden hand of all who dwell on the earth. Zephaniah chapter two. Gather yourselves, gather together, O shameful nation, before the decree takes effect, and the day passes like chaff before the burning anger of the Lord comes upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who carry out his justice. Seek righteousness. Seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon left in ruins. Ashdod will be driven out at noon and Ikron will be uprooted. Woe to the dwellers of the sea coast, O nations of the Sheritans. The word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, land of the Philistines, I will destroy you and no one will be left. So the sea coast will become a land of pastures with wells for shepherds and folds of sheep. The coast will belong to the remnants of the house of Judah. There they will find pasture. They will lie down in the evening among the houses of Ashkelon. For the Lord their God will attend to them and rest and restore their captives. Verse eight. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insult of the Ammonites who have taunted my people and threatened their borders. 
Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab will be, surely Moab will be like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a perpetual wasteland. The remnant of my people will plunder them. The remainder of my nation will dispossess them. This they shall have in return for their pride, for taunting and mocking the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrifying to them. When he starves all the gods of the earth, then the nations of every shore will bow in worship to him, each in its own place. You too, O Kushites, will be slain by the sword, will be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hands against the north and destroy Assyria. He will make Nineveh a desolation, as dry as a desert. Herds will be down in a mist, creatures of every kind. Both the desert howl and screech howl will roast atop our pillars. Their calls will sound from the window, but their solution will lie on the threshold, for it will expose the beams of cedar. This carefree city that dwells securely, that thinks to herself, I am it, and there is none beside me. What a ruin she has become a resting place for beast. Everyone who passes by her hisses and shakes his fist. Sapaniah so, 3. Woe to the city of oppressors, rebellious and defiled. She heeded no voice. She accepted no correction. She does not trust in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves, leaving nothing for the morning. Her prophets are reckless, faithless men. Her priests profane the sanctuary. They do violence to the Lord. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. He applies his justice morning by morning. He does not fail at dawn, yet the unjust know no shame. Verse six, I have cut off the nations. Their corner towers are destroyed. I have made the streets deserted with no one to pass through. Their cities are laid waste with no man no inhabitants. I said, surely you will not, you will fear me and accept correction. Then a dwelling place will not be cut off, despite all for which I punish her. But they rose early to corrupt all their deeds. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord, until the day I rise to testify. For my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignations, all my burning anger. For all the earth will be consumed by the fire of my jealousy. Verse 9. For then I will restore pure lips to the peoples, that all may call upon the name of the Lord, and serve him shoulder to shoulder. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, my scattered people, will bring me an offering. On that day, you will not be put to shame for any of the deeds by which you have transgressed against me. For then I will remove from among you those who rejoice in their pride, and you will never again be on my holy mountain. 
but I will leave within you a meek and humble people, and they will trust in the name of the Lord. The remnants of Israel will no longer do wrong or speak lies, nor will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths, but they will feed and lie down with no one to make them tremble. Verse 14. Sing for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. Israel's king, the Lord is among you. No longer will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall in. The Lord he is mighty to save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those among you who grieve over the appointed feast so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame, and I will appoint and gather the scattered. And I will appoint praise and fame for the disgrace throughout the earth. At that time, I will bring you in. Yes, at that time, I will gather you. For I will give you fame and praise among all the people of the earth. I will restore your captives before your very eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Mikey. God bless you. God bless you. Real good. Let me do something here real quick. Um, hallelujah amen. amen so welcome brother michael to take over from the book of Hey guy, love you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hey guy, chapter one, verse one. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Hey guy, the prophet of Zebubel, uh, the son of Shetel governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jezodak, the high priest, saying, thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, this people says that the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, it is time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but, do, uh, but you are not filled with drink. Your clothes, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the temple that I may take the pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins. While every one of you runs to his own house, uh, while every one of you runs to his own house, therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, 
on the grain and the new wine and the oil or whatever the ground brings forth on man and livestock and on all labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and Joshua, the son of Jezadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jezodak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Haggai chapter two. In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jezodak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel saying the, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jezodak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to uh, the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while. I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. On the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of, Lord, of, of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now ask the priest concerning the law, saying, If one carries holy meat in the folds of his garment, with the edge he touches bread or stew, wine or oil or any food, will it become holy? Then the priest answered and said, No. And Haggai said, if one who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, will it be unclean? So the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, so is, the, is this people, and so is the nation before me, says the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and what they offer there is unclean. And now carefully consider this, carefully consider from this day forward, from before the stone was laid upon, stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days, when one came to a heap of the 20 ephans, there were but 10, but one came to the wine vat to draw out 50 baths from the press, there were but 20. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail in all of the labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn as yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit? For from this day I will bless you, says the Lord. And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the uh, heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down. But everyone by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shetel, says the Lord, 
and will make you like a sig uh, like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter one. Zechariah chapter one, verse one. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Bershika, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying, the Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore says to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds, but they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers, were, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to do to us according to our ways. According to our ways. And according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. On the 24th day of the 11th month, which is in the month of Sheba, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Bishika, the son of Ido, the prophet. I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Then I said, my Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord who stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro throughout the earth and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which you were angry these 70 years? And the Lord answered the angel who talked to me with good and comforting words. So the angel who spoke with me said to me, proclaim saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I am exceedingly angry with the nation at ease for I was a little angry and they helped, but with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again proclaim, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion, and will again choose Jerusalem. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who walked with me, what are these? So he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me the, fourth, uh, the four craftsmen. The Lord showed me four craftsmen, and I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to tarry them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. Zechariah chapter 2. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with measuring line, with measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what it is with and what its length. And there was the angel who talked with me, going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. 
For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread your, you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape. You who dwell in the daughter of Babylon, dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I am coming and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you, and the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land, and he will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy hab hab habitation. Amen. Zechariah chapter three. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at the right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a plan plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with fi uh, filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, and to him he said, see, I have removed you your iniquity from you, and I will cloth you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put on clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my commandment, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are wonders, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the, of the land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine under and under his fig tree. Zechariah chapter four, verse one. Now the angel who talked with me came back and, and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what did you see? What do you see? Uh, so I said, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to, uh, to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of, of the bowl and the other at his left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Who are you, O great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hand of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of the small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord 
which scanned to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstead and at its left? And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two golden pipes from which the golden oil drains, from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. So he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah chapter five. Then I turned and raised my eyes and saw there a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? So I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubics and its width 10 cubics. Then he said to me, this is the curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. Every thief shall be expelled according to this side of the scroll, and every perjurer shall be expelled according to that side of it. I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. It shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with its timber and stones. Then the angel who talked with me came out and said to me, lift your eyes now and see what this is that goes forth. So I asked, what is it? And he said, it is a basket that is going forth. He also said, this is their resemblance throughout the earth. Here is a lead disc lifted up. And this is a woman sitting inside the basket. Then he said, this is wickedness. And he thrust her down into the basket and threw the lead cover over its mouth. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were two women coming with the wind in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between earth and heaven. So I said to the angel who talked with me, where are they carrying the basket? And he said to me, to build a house for it in the land of Shinar. When it is ready, the basket will be set there on its base. Zachariah 6. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. No problem. And again, I lifted up my eyes and saw four chariots coming out from between two mountains. Mountains of bronze. The first chariot had red horses, the second black horses, the third white horses, and the fourth dappled horses all of them strong. So I inquired of the angel who was speaking with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel told me, these are the four spirits of heaven going forth from their station before the Lord of all the earth. The one with the black horse, horses is going towards the, the land of the north. The one with the white horses towards the west and the one with the dappled horses towards the south. Not west, As the strong horses went out, they were eager to go and patrol the earth. And the Lord said, go and patrol the earth. So they patrolled the earth. Then the Lord summoned me and said, behold, the, those going to the land of the north have given rest to my spirit in the land of the north. Verse nine, the word of the Lord also came to me saying, take an offering from the exiles, from Eldai, Tobijah, and Jediah, who have arrived from Babylon, and go that same day to the house of Josiah, son of Zephaniah. Take silver and gold, make an onyx, an onyx crown, and set it on the head of the high priest, Joshua, son of Jehuzadak. And you are to tell him that this is what the Lord of hosts says. Here is a man whose name is a branch, and he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. Yes. He will build the temple of the Lord. 
he will be clothed in splendor and will sit on his throne and rule. And he will be a priest on his throne. And there will be peaceful counsel between the two. The crown will reside in the temple of the Lord as a memorial to Helam, Tobijah, Jediah, and the gracious son of Zephaniah. Even those far away will come and build the temple of the Lord. And you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. This will happen if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Zechariah 7. In the fourth year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, the month of Chesley. Now the people of Bethel has sent Shereza and Regim Melech, along with their men to plead before the Lord by asking the priest of the house of the Lord of hosts, as well as the prophets. Shall I weep and fast in the fifth month? as I have done these many years. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, ask all the people of the land and the priest, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month for these 70 years, was it really for me that you fasted? And when you were eating and drinking, were you not doing so simply for yourself? Are these not the words that the Lord proclaimed through the earlier prophets? When Jerusalem and its surrounding towns were populous and prosperous, and the Negates and the foothills were inhabited. Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah saying, this is what the Lord of hosts says, administer through justice, Show love in devotion and companion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor, and do not plot evil in your hearts against one another. But they refuse to pay attention and turn a stubborn shoulder. They stopped up their heels from hearing. They made their hearts like flint and will not listen to the law or the words that the Lord of hosts has sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. Therefore, great anger came from the Lord of hosts. And just as I had called and they will not listen, so when they called, I will not listen, says the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with the wild wind among all the nations that they had not known. And the land was left desolate behind them so that no one could come or go. Thus, they turned the pleasant land into a desolation. Zechariah chapter 8. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, this is what the Lord of hosts says. I am jealous for Zion with great zeal. I am jealous for her with great favor. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called a city of truth. The mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord of hosts says. Old men and old women will again sit along the streets of Jerusalem, each with a staff in hand because of great age. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing there. 
This is what the Lord of hosts says. If this is impossible in the eyes of the remnant of these people in these days, shall it also be impossible in my eyes, declares the Lord of hosts. This is what the Lord of hosts says. I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back to dwell in Jerusalem where they will be my people and I will be their faithful and righteous God. Verse nine, this is what the Lord of hosts says. Let your hands be strong. You will now hear these words spoken by the prophets who were present when the foundations were laid to reveal the temple. The house of the Lord of hosts, for behold, those days neither man nor beast received wages, nor, were, nor was there safety from the enemy for anyone who came or went. For I had turned every man against his neighbor. But now I will not treat the remnants of these people as I did in the past, declares the Lord of hosts. For the seed will be prosperous. The vine will yield its fruits. The ground will yield its produce and the skies will give their due. To the remnants of these people, I will give all these things as an inheritance. As you have been a cost among the nation, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid. Let your hands be strong. For this is what the Lord of hosts says. Just as I resolved to bring disaster upon you when your fathers provoked me to anger and I did not relent, says the Lord of hosts. So now I have resolved to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things you must do. Speak truth to one another. Render true and, and sound judgments in your gates. Do not plot evil in your hearts against your neighbor and do not love to swear falsely. For I hate all these things, declares the Lord. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, this is what the Lord of hosts says, the fast of the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, and the 10th month will become times of joy and gladness, cheerful feasts for the house of Judah. Therefore, you are to love both truth and peace. This is what the Lord of hosts says, people will yet come, the residents of many cities and the residents of one city will go to another saying, let us go at once to please before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. And many people and strong nations will come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to plead before the Lord. This is what the Lord of hosts says. In those days, 10 men from the nations of every tongue will tightly grasp the robe of a Jew saying, let us go with you for we have heard what the God, for we have heard that God is with you. Zechariah chapter nine. This is the burden of the word of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus is resting place for the highest of men and of all the tribes of Israel are upon the Lord and also against Hamath which borders it as well as Ty and Sidon 
though they are very shrewd. Tai has built herself a fortress. She has heaped up silver like dust and gold like the dirt of the streets. Behold, the Lord will impoverish her and cast her wealth into the sea and she will be consumed by fire. Ashkelon will see and fear. Gaza will rate in agony, as will Ikran. For our hope will wither, there will cease to be a king in Gaza, and Ashkelon will be uninhabited. A mixed race will occupy Ash Ashdod. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will remove the blood from their mouths and the abominations from between their teeth. Then they too will become a remnant for our God. They will become like a clown in Judah. And Ekron will be like Zebusites. But I will camp around my house because of an army because of those who march to and fro. And never again will an oppressor overrun my people. For now, I keep watch with my own eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. And I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and a horse from Jerusalem and the bow of war will be broken. Then he will proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will extend from sea to sea and from Ephraim to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant, I will release your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore to you double, for I will bend Judah as a bow and fit it with Ephraim. I will rouse your sons, O Zion, against the sons of Greece. I will make you like the sword of a mighty man. Verse 14. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will sound the ram's horn and advance in the wild winds of the south. The Lord of hosts will shield them. They will destroy and conquer with sling stones. They will drink and rowl as with, as with wine. And they will be filled with sprinkling bowls, drenched like the corners of the altar. On that day, the Lord their God will save them as the flock of his people. For like jewels in a crown, they will sparkle. Over his, hand, over his land, how lovely they will be and how beautiful. Grain will make the young men flourish and new wine, the young women. Zechariah 10. Zechariah chapter 10, ask the Lord for rain in springtime. The Lord makes the storm clouds and he will give everyone showers of rain and crops in the field. For idols speak deceit and diviners see illusions. They tell false dreams and offer empty comfort. Therefore, the people wander like sheep, oppressed for lack of a shepherd. My anger burns against the shepherds, and I will punish the leaders. For the Lord of hosts attends to his flock, the house of Judah. 
he will make them like his royal steed in battle. The cornerstone will come from Judah, the ten peg from him, as well as a battle bow, and every ruler together. They will be like mighty men in battle, trampling the enemy in the mire of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them. They will put the horsemen to shame. I will strengthen the house of Judah and save the house of Joseph. I will restore them because I have compassion on them. And they will be as though I had not rejected them. For I am the Lord their God, and I will answer them. Ephraim will be like a mighty man, and their hearts will be glad as with wine. Their children will see it and be joyful. Their hearts will rejoice in the Lord. I will whistle for them to gather, for I have redeemed them. And as they, as they will be as numerous, as they once were. Though I saw them, though I saw them among the nations, they will remember me in distant lands. They and their children will leave and return. I will bring them back from Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them to Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. They will pass through the sea of distress and drag the waves of the sea. All the depths of the Nile will dry up. The pride of Assyria will be brought down and the scepter of Egypt will depart. I will strengthen them in the Lord and in his name they will work. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may consume your cedars. Well, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen. The majestic trees are ruined. Well, O oaks of Basham, for the dense forest has been cut down. Listen to the wailing of the shepherds for their glory is in real. Listen to the roaring of the young lions, for the tickets of the Jordan are destroyed. This is what the Lord my God says, pasture the flock marked for slaughter, whose buyers slaughter them without remorse. Those who sell them say, blessed be the Lord for I am rich. Even their own shepherds have no compassion on them. For I will no longer have compassion of the people of the land, declares the Lord. For behold, I will cause his men to fall into the hands of his neighbor and his king. Who will devastate the land and I will not deliver it from their hands. So I pastures the flock marked for slaughter especially the afflicted of the flock. Then I took for myself two staffs, calling one favor and the other union, and I pastured the flock. And in one month, I dismissed three shepherds. My soul grew impatient with the flock, and their souls also distested me. Then I said, I will no longer shepherd you. Let the dying die and the perishing perish. And let those who remain devour one another's flesh. Verse 10. Next, I took my staff, called favor and cut it into two. Revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. It was revoked on that day. And so the afflicted of the flocks who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. Then I told them, if it seems right to you, give me my wages. 
but if not, keep them. So they weighed out my wages, 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the porter. This magnificent price at which they valued me. So I took 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the porter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut into my second staff called Union, breaking the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said to me, take up once more the equipment of a foolish shepherd. For behold, I will raise up a shepherd in the land who will neither care for the lost, nor seek the young, nor heal the broken, nor sustain the healthy, but he will devour the flesh of the choice sheep and tear off the hoofs. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May a sword strike his arm and his right eyes. May his arm be completely withered and his eyes, his right eyes, utterly blinded. Zechariah chapter 12. This is the burden of the word of the Lord coming concerning Israel. Thus declares the Lord, who stretch out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth, who forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding people. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day, when all the nations of the earth gather against her, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples, all who will heed it, if it away and will be severely injured. On that day declares the Lord, I will strike every horse with panic and every rider with madness. I will keep a watchful eyes on the house of Judah, but I will strike with blindness all the horses of the nations. Then the leaders of Judah will say in their hearts, the people of Jerusalem are my strength, but the Lord of hosts is their God. On that day, I will make the clowns of Judah like a fire pot in a wood pile, like a flaming torch among the ships. They will consume all the peoples around them on the right and on the left, while the people of Jerusalem remain secure there. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first so that the glory of the house of David and of the people of Jerusalem may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will defend the people of Jerusalem so that the weakest among them will be like David and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. So on that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Then I will pour out on the house of David and on the house of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and prayer. And they will look on me, the one they have pierced. They will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the wailing in Jerusalem will be as great as the wailing of Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn, each climb on his own, the climb of the house of David and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, 
the clan of Shimei and their wives, and all the remaining clans and their wives. Zechariah chapter 13. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the people of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. And on that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will erase the names of the idols from the land and they will no longer be remembered. I will also remove the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, his father and mother will bore him and will say to him, you shall not remain alive because you have spoken falsely in the name of the Lord. When he prophesies, his father and his mother will bore him, will pierce him through. And on that day, every prophet who prophesies will be ashamed of his vision and he will not put on a hairy cloak in order to deceive. He will say, I am not a prophet. I walk for the land for I was purchased as a servant in my youth. If someone asks him, what are these wounds on your chest? He will answer, these are the wounds I receive in the house of my friends. Verse seven, awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, declares the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn my hand against the little ones. And in all the land, declares the Lord, two thirds will be cut off and perish, but a third will be left in it. This third I will bring through the fire and I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ramaike, finish up the book of Zechariah. 14. Um, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the woman ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of the battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the mountain of olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it to the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azul. Yes, you shall flee. As you flee from the earthquake in the days of Uzzah, king of Judah, Thus the Lord, my God, thus the Lord, my God will come and all the saints with you. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at the evening time, it shall happen that it will be light. And in the last day, it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem half of them towards the Eastern Sea and half of them towards the Western Sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be, the Lord is one and his name one. All the land shall be turned into a, a plain from Giba to Raman, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate, and from the tower of Hanel 
to the king's wine pressers. The people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited, and this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongue shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbors and raise his hands against his neighbor's hands. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and the donkey, and on all the cattle that will be in those camps. So shall this plague be. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes, the nations who do not come up to the keep, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to the Feast of Tabernacles. In that holiness to the Lord, in that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bellies of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls under before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. In that day, there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts, a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. We welcome our dear Cynthia. God bless you. You mm -hmm. can pick up the book of Malachi and finish. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Malachi chapter one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by, my, by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even, even though Edom has said, we have been impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever. Your eyes shall see and you shall say, the Lord is magnified beyond the border of Israel. A son honors his father and a servant is master. If then I am, I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts. But now entreat God's favor, that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he accept you favorably? says the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you who will shut the doors 
so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be, a, shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it, in that you say, the table of the Lord is defied. In that you say, the table of the Lord is defied. And its fruit, its food is contemptible. You also say, oh, what a weariness. And you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Thus, you bring an offering. Should I accept this from your hand, says the Lord? But cost be the deceiver who has in his flock a meal and takes a vow, but sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Malachi chapter two. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread ref refuse on your faces. The, the refuse of your solemn feast and one will take you away with it. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was, his, was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts, but you have departed from the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I also have made you contemptible and base before all the people, because you have kept you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in the law. Have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? Judah has de dealt treacherously and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah has profaned. The Lord's holy institution, which he loves, he has married the daughter of a foreign god. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob, the man who does this, being awake and aware. Yet, who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts? And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witnessed between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we wearied him? In, 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 the, in that you say, 
Everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. Mm. It delights in them. Or where is the just God? Where is the God of justice? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No instruction. This is for the priest. And it starts to add a lot of pastors leaving their wives. This, a lot of priests, a lot of people in the church. Statistics, the level of this verse in the church is even getting higher than the ones in the world. And then we are coming to church with offering. The Bible not say before you give your offering, if you know that somebody has what against you, that is, that is, Jesus came and talked about it, but he already gave it to Malachi too. God hates something and there's no instruction in the church against it. And mm. a pastor will say, I can defend a divorce. Excuse you? Excuse, you can defend what? Yes, I sanctioned it. You can defend what God hates. Divorce mm. is, ba- is bad. Not just for the two adults, mm. I'm telling a colleague of mine, but for the children, mm-hmm. for the husband's wife uh, family, mm-hmm. for the wife's family, for the friends that have no business, every begin, everybody he say he what he does, he covers one's garment with violence. Mm-hmm. People begin to have hatred towards the woman. Well, is that wife that you married that did this? Is that man that you married that did this? <laughs> oh God, have mercy on us. Oh, God, have mercy on us. You say, how have we wearied him? By saying everyone who does evil is good. We're saying it's okay. We're saying it's all right. We're saying we understand. You have a right. I don't know. But may the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord cause our eyes to open to his word. Amen. May he give us the grace and the strength to walk with him and walk in his word. It's a tough place to be. Yeah. And that's why some people say they understand why you are. No. The Bible, I was saying before I say, is it the Bible? The Bible gives room for separation. Let everybody go and calm down. Separation is in the word of God. But the point is that if nobody is teaching it, nobody knows it. Mm-hmm. And the option that the world gives is divorce, and then we want to. We want to excuse it in the world. We can't excuse it. In this Malachi, the only thing they preach is Malachi 3.10. They don't look at Malachi 2. They don't look at Malachi 1. Malachi 3.10 is the only someone that we have. The same pastor that is preaching Malachi 3.10. Where is his wife? The same pastor that is is preaching Malachi 3.10. Is he sanctioning divorce? Is he wedding people or um, divorce and remarriage? That pastor is sanctioning, he's preaching Malachi 3.10. If you actually preach Malachi 3 2 2 and Malachi 3 1, but we're going to celebrate the word of God at the end. Let me know, as you know, because I just had to, you know, it's hard. Like I said, it's a hard place to be. God makes room for separation. God does not. If God say here, we see it right here. It is, I don't know what else to say. As if we to see this in Malachi 2 16, the Bible says, For I hate. I mean, which other word do, you, do we want God to use? He said, I hate. Hate is hate. God does not really, God only hates evil. So if God hates evil and God says in Malachi 3, 2, 16, that I hate divorce, that means divorce is evil. We can justify it. We cannot in the world justify it. You walk away. God makes room for walk away in Corinthians, walk away. But because children, when children are involved, like I said, it, 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 it covers violence. I was talking to my colleagues, like, the son is so upset, and this daughter, you know, there's going because the husband left divorce. I say, yeah, because you would not understand, even though your child is in the studies, this child is in the studies, the child is still hurt. Mm-hmm. He's in the studies. You should expect that. I, I watched a 30 year old man be, be a man that the mother and father separated, or no, not separated, they divorced. But that's what he does. The children are destroyed. Mm-hmm. Her family is blaming. Her husband, his family is blaming her. The friends are fighting against each other. Violence. May the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord have mercy on us. Like I said, it's a tough place to be, but let us follow God. 
That's the thing. Let's stay on the side of God. All right? You can continue. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's... For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years, and I will come near, near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet, from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You have cursed, you are cursed with a curse. You have, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. For, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for, the, for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up that even tempt God and go free. Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who served him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. Malachi chapter four. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. For to you who fear, fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like fat like tall fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. 
On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. End of the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Now we go to the book of Ezra. Okay, Ezra. Ezra. So, Sister Tina, let's start from the book of Ezra. And then we walk up. Ezra chapter 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord stirred the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to send a proclamation throughout his kingdom and to put it in writing as follows. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia says. Mm -hmm. Lord, the God of heaven, who has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, has appointed me to build a house for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Whoever among you belongs to his people, may his God with him. And may he go to Jerusalem in Judah and build a house of the Lord. The God of Israel, he is a God who is in Jerusalem. And let every survivor, whoever, wherever he lives, be assisted by the men of that region. Silver, gold, goods, livestock, along with a free will offering for the house of God in Jerusalem. Mm. So the family heads of Judah and Benjamin, along with the priests and Levites, everyone whose spirit, whose spirit God has stirred, prepared to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And all their neighbors supported them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with valuables in mm. addition to all their goodwill offerings. King Cyrus also brought out the articles belonging to the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed it in the temple of his gods. King Cyrus, Cyrus king of Persia, mm -hmm. had them brought out by the hand of Mithredah the treasurer, who counted them out to Shizbazar, the priest of Judah. This was the inventory. Tell us. 30 gold dishes, 1,000 silver dishes, 29 silver utensils, 30 gold bowls, 410 matching silver bowls and 1,000 other articles. In all, there were 5,400 gold and silver articles. She's bazaar brought all these along when the exiles went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Wow. Ezra two. Now, these are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles, carried away to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, its king. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town, accompanied by Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Relia, Mordecai, Bilsham, Misper, Bigvi, Rehum, and Bana. This is the count of the men of Israel. 
The Descendants of Parush, 2,172. The Descendant of Shispatayo, 372. The Descendants of Ara, 775. The Descendants of Pahat Moab, through the line of Yeshua and Zoa, 2,812. Mm -hmm. The descendants of Elam, 1,254. The descendants of Zatu, 945. The descendants of Zakai, 760. Mm -hmm. The descendants of Bani, 642. The descendants of Bibai, 623. The descendants of Asgard, 1,222. The descendants of Adonikam, 666. The descendants of Bigvai, 2056. Descendants of Adin, 454. Descendants of Atta through Ezekiel, 98. Descendants of Bizai, 323. Descendants of Zora, 112. Descendants of Asham. 223, the descendants of Giba, 95. The man of Bethlehem, 123. The man of Netopa. The man of Netopa, 56. The man of Anatot, 128. The descendant of Asma, Hasmavet, 42. The man of Kiriah, Jerim, Shephaya, and Beirut, 743. The man of Rama and Giba, 621. The man of Mishmach, 122. The man of Bethel and Hai, 223. The, man, the descendants of Nebo, 52. The descendants of Magbish, 156. The descendants of the Odorilla, 1,254. 1, the descendants of Aram, 320. The man of Lord, Hadid, and Ono, 725. The man of Jericho, 345. And the descendants of Shinar, 3,630. Mm. The priest. The descendants of Jedi, through the house of Jeshua. 972, 973, the descendants of Emen, 1,052, the descendants of Pasha, 1,247, mm -hmm. and the descendants of Aaron, 1,017, the Levi, the descendants of Yeshua and Kadmea through the line of Odavaya, 74. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, 128. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom. Oh my God. The descendants of Atta, the descendants of Talmud. The descendants of Aku, the descendants of Atita, and the descendants of Shobai, 
139 in all. The temple servants, the descendants of Zia, the descendants of Ashufa, the descendants of Tabaut, the descendants of Kiros, the descendants of Shiites, Shiaha, the descendants of Padon, the descendants of Lebanon, the descendants of Agaba, the descendants of Akub, the descendants of Agab, the descendants of Shammai, the descendants of Anan, the descendants of Gideon, the descendants of Gaha, the descendants of Rial, Rial, the descendants of Reason, the descendants of Nekoda, the descendants of Gaza, the descendants of Huza, the descendants of Persia, the descendants of Bizai, the descendants of Ashna, the descendants of Mehunim, the descendants of Nefusim, the descendants of Bakuk, the descendants of Akufa, the descendants of Aro, the descendants of Bazjut, Bazlut, the descendants of Mehira, mm -hmm. the descendants of Asha, the descendants of Barakos, the descendants of Sisera, the descendants of Tema, yeah. the descendants of Nezai, the descendants of Atifa, the descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, the descendants of Sopharit, the descendants of Peruda, the descendants of Zahala, the descendants of Darkwan, the descendants of Gideon, the descendants of Shephatia, the descendants of Atil, the descendants of Pusherit Azerban, the descendants of Ami, the temple servants and descendants of the servants of Solomon number 392 in all. The following came up from Tel Mela, Tel Hasha, Sherub Adan, and Ima, but could not prove their own families were descendants from Israel. The descendants of Deliah, the descendants of Tobias, Tobiah, the descendants of Nicora, 652 in all. And from among the priests, the descendants of Obiah, the descendants of Akos, the descendants of Bazulai, who had married the daughter of Bazulai the Giladite and was called by their name. Mm -hmm. These men searched for their family records, but they could not find them. And so we excluded from the priesthood as unclean. Mm -hmm. The governor ordered them not to eat the most holy things until there was a priest to consult the Urim and the Tommy. Mm -hmm. The whole assembly numbered 42,360. Wow. In addition to their 7,337 men and maid servants, as well as their 200 male and female singers, they had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings mm -hmm. to rebuild the house of God on its original site. According to the ability they gave to the treasury for their work 
61,000 darics of gold. Hallelujah. <laughs> 5,000 minutes of silver. Mm. 100 priestly garments. So the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants, along with some of the people, settled in their hometown. And the rest of the Israelites settled in their, in their towns. Ezra chapter three. By the seventh month, the Israelites had settled in their towns and assembled as one man in Jerusalem. Then Yeshua, son of Sudada, son of Josadak, and his fellow priests, along with Zerubbabel, son of Shiltiel, and his associates, began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt off on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. They set up the altar on his foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord. Both the morning and evening burnt offerings, even though they feared the people of the land. They also celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles in accordance with what is written. And they offered burnt offerings daily on the number prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular bond offerings and those for new moons and for all the appointed sacred feasts of the Lord, as well as all the free will offering brought to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, the Israelites began to offer bond offering to the Lord, although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. They gave money to the masons and carpenters and food and drink and all to the people of Sidon and Tyre to bring cedar, lo cedar logs from Lebanon to Zappa by sea as authorized by Cyrus, king of Persia. In the second month of the second year, after they had arrived at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shiltio, Jeshua, son of, son of Joe Zadek, and the rest of the associate, including the priest, the Levites, and all who had returned to Jerusalem from the captivity began to work. They appointed Levites 20 years of age or older to supervise the construction of the house of the Lord. Then Yeshua and his sons and brothers, Kadmiel and his sons, descendant of Yehuda, and the sons of Enadad, and the sons and brothers, all Levites, joined together to supervise those working on the house of the Lord. When the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with symbols, took their position to praise the Lord, as David, king of Israel, had prescribed. And they sang, responsively with praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. For he is good, for his loving the devotion to Israel endures forever. Then all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord has been laid. But many of the elder priests, many of the older priests, Levites and family heads who had seen the first temple wept loudly when they saw the foundation of this temple. Still, many others shouted joyfully. The people could not distinguish the shout of joy from the shout of weeping mm. because the people were making 
so much noise and the sound was heard from afar. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ezra chapter four. Michael. Sorry, Martin. I'll, I'll continue from here. <laughs> Ezra chapter four, verse one. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord, God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, let us build with you, for we seek your gods as you do, and we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, es es king of Assyria, who bought us here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the father's houses of Israel said to them, you may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in, in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their, their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. In the reign of Assyrius, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Axirius, also uh, Bisham, Mitherdia, Tabel, and the rest of their companions wrote to Axirius, king of Persia, and the letter was written in Amic, Amoric script and translated into the Amoric language. Rehum, the commander, and Shuza, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to the king Axirius in this fashion. From Rehum, the commander, Shizam, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, representatives of the Danites, uh, the uh, Aparashites, the Taperpels, the people of Persia, and Eric, and Babylon, and Shusha, and the Dehavites, the Elamites, and the rest of the nation whom the great and noble Opsnapter took captive and settled in the cities of Samaria and the remainder beyond the river and so forth. This is the copy of that letter they sent him. To King Axirius, from your servants, the men of the region beyond the river and so forth, let it be known to the king that the Jews who came up from you have come to us at Jerusalem and are building the rebellious and evil city and are finishing its walls and repairing the foundations. Let it be known, let it now be known to the king that if this city is built and the walls completed, they will not pay tax, tribute, or custom, and the king's treasuries will be diminished. Now, because we receive support from the palace, it was not proper for us to see the king's dishonor. Therefore, we have sent and informed the king that search may be made in the book of records of your fathers. And you will find in the book of records and know this city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces, and that they have incited sedition within the city in former times, for which, which cause this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls completed, the result will be that you will have no dominion over beyond the river. The king sent an answer to Reham, the commander, to Shizam, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions who dwell in Samaria, and to the remainder beyond the river, peace and so forth. The letter which you sent us has been clearly read before me, and I gave the command, and a search has been made, and it was found that this city in former times has revolted against kings and rebellion and sedition and have fostered it in. There have all also been mighty kings over Jerusalem who have ruled over all the region beyond the river and tax and tribute and custom were paid to them. Now give the command to make these men cease that this city may not be built until the, until the command is given by me. 
take heed now that you do not fail to do this. Why should damage increase to hurt to the hurt of the kings? Now, when the copy of King Axirius's letter was read before Rehab, Shizam the scribe and their companions, they, were, they went up to haste to Jerusalem against the Jews and by force of arms made them seize. Thus the work of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem seized. And it was discontinued until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Ezra chapter five, verse one. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Ido, prophets prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God and the, the name of the God of Israel who was over them. So Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the son of Shisel, and Jesha, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. At the same time, Tatini, the governor of the region beyond the river, and Shitar, Bozani, and their companions came to them and spoke thus to them, who has commanded you to build this temple and finish this wall? Then accordingly, we told them the names of the men who were constructing the building. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, so that they could not make them seize till a report could go to Darius. Then a written letter, then a written answer was returned concerning this matter. This is a copy of the letter that Tatini sent, the governor of the region beyond the river, and Shatar Bazani and his companions, the Persians who were in the region beyond the river, to Darius the king. They sent this letter to him in which was written thus, to Darius the king, all peace. Let it be known to the king that we went into the province of Judah to the temple of the great God, which is being built with heavy stones and timber, is being laid in the walls and the work goes on diligently and prospers in their hands. Then we asked those elders and spoke thus to them, who commanded you to build this temple and to finish these walls? We also asked them their names to inform you that we might write the names of the men who were chief among them. And thus they returned us an answer saying, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. And we are rebuilding this, the temple that which built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and completed. But because of our fathers provoked the God of heaven to wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Sheladin, who destroyed this temple and carried the people away to Babylon. However, in the first city, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to build this house of God. Also, the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple that was in Jerusalem and carried into the temple of Babylon. Those, ki those King Cyrus took from the temple of Babylon and they were given to the one named Shezebar, who had made governor, who had made governor. And he said to him, take these articles, go carry them to the temple site that is in Jerusalem and let the house of God be rebuilt on its former site. Then the same Shezebazar, Shezebazar came and laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. But from that time, even until now, it has been under construction and is not finished. Now, therefore, if it seems good to the king, let a search be made in the king's treasure house, which is there in Babylon, whether it is so that a decree was issued by King Cyrus to build this house of God at Jerusalem and let the king send us his pleasure concerning this matter. Ezra chapter six, verse one. Then King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. And at Akhmetah in the palace that is in the province 
of media, a scroll was found and in it, a record was written thus. In the first year of King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundations of it be firmly laid its height 60 cubics and its width 60 cubics, with three rows of heavy stones and one row of new timber. Let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury and let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem and bought to Babylon be restored and taken back to the temple, which is in Jerusalem, each to its place and deposit them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tatanini, governor of the region beyond the river, and Shitars, Bazani, and your companions, the Persians who are beyond the river, kept yourselves far from there. Keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of this house of God al alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on his site. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elder of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men so that they are not hindered, and whatever they need, young bulls, rams, and lambs for burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem. Let it be given them day by day without fail, that they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Also, I issue a decree that whosoever alters this edict, let a timber be pulled from his house and erected and let him be hanged on it and let his house be made a ref, uh, refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any king or people who put their hand to alter it and to destroy this house of God, which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree. Let it be done diligently. Then Tatanini, governor of the region beyond the river, Shetaza, Shetaza Bazani, and their companions diligently did according to what King Darius had sent. So the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and finished it according to the commandment of the, of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius and Axirius, king of Persia. Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar which was in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the descendants of the captivity celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. And they offered sacrifices at the dedication of this house of God, 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of tribes of Israel. They assigned the priests to their divisions and the Levites to their divisions over the service of God in Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the descendants of the captivity kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, for the priests and the Levites had purified themselves. All of them were ridiculously clean, ritually clean. And they slaughtered the Passover lambs for all the descendants of the captivity for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. Then the children of Israel, who had returned from the captivity, ate together with all who had separated themselves from the filth of the nations of the land in order to seek the Lord God of Israel. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days within with joy. For the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Amen. Ezra chapter 7, verse 1. Now after these things, in the reign of Xerius, king of Persia, Ezra, the son 
of Siriah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hukah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Adstob, the son of Amiria, the son of Azariah, the son of Mataro, the son of Ziriah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abusha, the son of Phineas, the son of Eliza, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. King granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. Some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nidim, came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Axirius. And Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of, king, of the king. On the first day of the month, he began his journey from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. This is the copy of the letter that King Xerius gave Ezra, the priest, the scribe, expert in the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. Xerius, king of kings, to Ezra, the priest, a scribe of the law of, the, of God of heaven, perfect peace, and so forth. I issue a decree that all those of the people of Israel and the priests and Levites in my realm who volunteer to go up to Jerusalem may go with you. And whereas you are being sent by the king and his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the Lord of your God, with, the, with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand, and whereas you are to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem, and whereas all the silver and gold that you may find in all the problems of Babylon, along with the free will offering of the people and priests are to be freely offered to the house of their God in Jerusalem. Now, therefore, be careful to buy with this money bulls, rams, and lambs with their grain offering and their drink offering and offer them on the altar of the house of your God in, in Jerusalem. And whatever seems good to you, and your brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, do it according to the will of your God. Also the articles that are given to you for the service of the house of God, deliver in full before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever more may be needed of the house of your God, which you may have a, occasion to provide, pay for it with from the king's treasury. And I, even I, Xerius the king, issue a decree to all the treasurers who are in the region beyond the river, that whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, may require of you, let it be done diligently. Up to 100 talents of silver, 100 cords of wheat, 100 baths of wine, 100 baths of oil and salt without prescribed limit. Whatever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it diligently be done for the house of, the, of God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Also, we inform you that it shall not be lawful to impose tax, tribute, or custom on any of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, Nithium, or servants of this house of God. And you, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region beyond the river, all such as known as all such as known the laws of your God and teach those who do not know them. Whoever will not observe the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily on him, whether it be death or banishment or, conf or confiscation uh, of goods or imprisonment. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, who has put such a thing as this in the king's heart, 
to beautify the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, and has extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. So I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered leading men of Israel to go up with me. You're muted, man. Uh, Ezra chapter eight, chapter, uh, chapter eight, verse one. These are the heads of their father's houses. And this is the genealogy of those who went up for, with me from Babylon in the reign of King Axirius. Of the sons of Phineas, Grisham, of the sons of Etermiar, Daniel, of the sons of David, Hatush, of the sons of Shikania, of the sons of Barsho, Zechariah, and registered with him were 150 males. Of the son of Bahath of Moab, Ethenio, the son of Zeriah, and with him 200 males of the sons of Shiakiza, Ben Jizalia, and with him 300 males. Of the sons of Adin, Ebi, the sons of Jonathan, and with him 50 males. Of the sons of Elam, Deshiah, the sons of Attilia, and with him 70 males. Of the sons of Stephania, of the sons of Zebida, of the sons of Michael, and with him 80 males. Of the sons of Joab, Ab Abdiah, the sons of Jehil, and with him 218 male. Of the sons of Shilometh, Ben Josiah, and with him 160 males. Of the sons of Biba, Zachariah, the sons of Biba, and with him 28 males. Of the sons of Asgad, Jonathan, the sons of Hakita, and with him, 110 males. Of the last sons of Adokimiam, whose names are written Eliphet, Jehel, and Shemaiah, and with him, 60 males. Also of the sons of Bigva, Utia, and Zabud, and with him, and with them, 70 males. Now I gathered them by the river that flows of, ha of, Havi of Havia and were camped there three days. And I looked among the people and priests and found none of the Levi there. Then I sent for Elizir, Ariel, Shemia, Elithan, Jarab, Elinatha, Nathan, Zechariah, and Mishulam, leaders, also of Joribab and Elathan, men of understanding. And I gave them a command for Edo, the chief man at the place of, of Kasiba. And I told them what they should say to Edo and his brethren and Neth and Nethiam and the Nithium at, at the place of Kasaba, of Kasia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. Then by the good hand of our God upon us, then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali, the sons of Levi, the sons of Israel, namely Shibaria, Shib Shiraba, with the sons and brothers, 18 men, and Hashaba, and with him, Jeshia, of the sons of Maria, his brothers and their sons, 20 men, also of Nitham, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nithium. All of them were designated by, by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahvia, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him 
the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to the request of the king and escort, so, uh, escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy of the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for, for this, and, and he answered our prayers. And I separated 12 of the leaders of the priests, Shir Shirabah, Hashabah, and the 10 of their brethren with them, and weighted out the silver, the gold, and the articles, the offering for the house of our God, which the king had and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered. I weighed into their hands 650 talents of silver, silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 golden uh, basins worth of thousands, uh, worth a thousand drachmas, and a, two, and a two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. And I said to them, you are holy to the Lord. The articles are holy also. And the silver and the gold are a free willing offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers houses of Israel and Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord. So the priests and the Levites receive the silver and gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem to the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava of the 12th day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us. And he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambush along the road. So we came to Jerusalem and stayed there three days. Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Miramoth the son of Uriah, the priest, and with him Eleazar, the son of Phinehas. With them were the Levites, Josabad, the son of Jeshia, mm -hmm. and Nobadiah, the son of Buni. With the number and weight of everything, all the weight was written down at the same time. The children of those who had been carried away captive, who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to God of Israel. 12 bulls for all Israel, 96 rams, 77 lambs, and 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord, mm -hmm. and they delivered the king's orders to the king's st straps and the governors in the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people and the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. That's Cynthia. Ezra chapter 9. When these things were done, the leaders came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. With respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons so that the holy seed is mixed with the people of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard this then I tore my garments and my robe and plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard and sat down astonished. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice, I arose from my fasting and having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord, of my, to the Lord my God. And I said, oh my God, I am too ashamed and humiliated to lift up my face to you, my God. 
for our iniquities have risen higher than our, our heads and our guilt has grown up to the heavens. Since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been very guilty. And for our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests, have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliation as it is this day. And now, for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place, that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage, but he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to, re to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, O oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments, which you commanded by your servants, the prophets, saying, the land which you are entering to possess is an unclean land. With the uncleanness of the peoples of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their impurity. Now, therefore, do not give your daughters as wives for their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it as an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds, and for our guilt, great guilt, since you, our God, have punished us less than our iniquities deserve and have given us such deliverance at this, should we again break your commandments and join in marriage with the people committing these abominations? Would you not be angry with us until you had consumed us so that there would be no remnant or survivor? O oh, Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant as it is this day. Here we are before you in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. Ezra chapter 10. Now, while Ezra was praying and while he was confessing, weeping and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel. For the people wept very bitterly. And Chechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, we have trespassed against our God and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them according to the advice of our master and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are, are with you. Be of good courage and do it. Then Ezra arose and made the leaders of the priests, the Levites, and all Israel swear an oath that they would do according to, the, to this word. So they swore an oath. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Jehohanan, the son of Eliashib. And when he came there, he ate no bread and drank no water, for he mourned because of the guilt of those from the captivity. And they issued a proclamation throughout Judah, Judah and Jerusalem to all the descendants of the captivity that they must gather at Jerusalem and that whoever would not come within three days, according to the instructions of the leaders and elders, all his property would be confiscated and he himself would be separated from the assembly of those from the captivity. So all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered at Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the 20th of the month and all the people sat in the open square of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and because of heavy rain. 
Then Ezra, the priest, stood up and said to them, you have transgressed and have taken pagan wives, adding to the guilt of Israel. Now, therefore, make confession to the Lord God of your fathers and do his will. Separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the pagan wives. Then all the assembly answered and said with a loud voice, yes, as you have said, so we must do. But there are many people. It is the reason for heavy rain and we are not able to stand outside. Nor is this the work of one or two days for there are many of us who have transgressed in this matter. Please let the leaders of our entire assembly stand and let all those in our cities who have taken pagan wives come at appointed times together with the elders and judges of their cities until the fierce wrath of our God is turned away from us in this matter. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tikva, opposed this. And Meshulam and Shabetai, the Levite, gave them support. Then the descendants of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain heads, heads of the father's household, were set apart by the father's household, each of them by name, and they sat down on the first day of the 10th, 10th month to examine the matter. By the first day of the first month, they finished questioning all the men who had taken pagan wives. And among the sons of the priests who had taken pagan wives, the following were found of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Joe Zadak and his brothers, Messiah, Eliezer, Jari, and Gedaliah. And they gave their promise that they would put away their wives. And being guilty, they pre presented a ram of the flock as their trespass offering. Also of the sons of Ima, Hanani and Zabediah, of the sons of Harim, Messiah, Elijah, Shemaiah, Jehiel, and Uzziah, of the sons of Pashur, Elionai, Messiah, Ishmael, Nathanael, Josabad, and Elasa. Also of the Levites, Josabad, Shimei, Keliah, the same is Kelida, Petahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. Also of the singers, Eliashib, and of the gatekeepers, Shalom, Telem, and Uri. And others of Israel, of the sons of Parosh, Ramiah, Josiah, Malchiah, Mijamin, Eliezer, Makshijah, Makshijah, and Benaiah. Of the sons of Elam, Mataniah, Zachariah, Jehiel, Abdil, Jeremoth, and Eliah. Of the sons of Zatu, Elioenai, Eliashib, Mataniah, Jeremoth, Zabad, and Aziza. Of the sons of Bibai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athlai. Of the sons of Bani, Meshulam, Maluk, Adiah, Jashub, Shael, and Ramoth. Of the sons of Pahat Moab, Adna, Shalal, Benaiah, Asiah, Mataniah, Bazalel, Binui, and Manasseh. Of the sons of Hari, Eliezer, Ishijah, Machijah, Shemaiah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Maluk, and Shemariah. Of the sons of Ashim, Matanai, Matanai, Matata, Zabad, Eliphelet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei. Of the sons of Bani, Madai, Amram, Uel, Benaya, Bedaya, Shalu, Benaya, Meremoth, Eliashib, Matanaya, Matenai, Jasei, Bani, Binui, Shimei, Shelmaya, Nathan, Adaya, Makna, Makna Debai, Shashai, Sharai, Azarel, Shelmaya, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph. Of the sons of Nabal, Jael, 
Metitaya, Jabad, Zebina, Jade, Joel, and Benaya. All these are taken pagan wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. Hey, we got to Ezra chapter 10, and I love it. I so love the word of God. Michael, let's start from you. What do you want to celebrate about God's word today? Um, I just want to celebrate God's mercy again. Um, you know, he didn't forget about Israel, and even through all of their, you know, uh, sins of the past and iniquity of the past you know he still remembered that he was their yes. god yes yes so it's really good to celebrate that yes. thank god that he he you know he remembers us and he you know he's still our god uh through yes. everything and, you know yes. if we follow his word if we, if we listen to his commandments he will always be there for us yes awesome so Cynthia, what do you want to celebrate about god's word today beautiful same thing same thing uh, I was not at the beginning, but it's like, I know that from the book of Ezra, it's like the return from captivity. So even though they, they sing, God still made a way. They Hallelujah. Came, yes. They came back. It, it, it just wants us to, to obey him, yeah. to do will. So no matter what we do, no matter how far we've gone, it's still, it's still compassionate. It still wants us to come back and it still makes a way to, for us to return to him. Hallelujah. Oh my God. That's so beautiful. Let me tell you what I want to celebrate today. I want to celebrate in extra, I think extra nine. I love it. Extra 913. It says, God has punished us less than our iniquities. I was like, whoa. God has punished us less than we deserve. Yeah. You know, I listen to the man of God that said, uh, uh, when he asked a friend, oh, how are you? He said, huh, considering what is going on, <laughs> better than I deserve. I think Dave Ramsey said the same thing. So yeah. better than where I'm supposed to have been over there. So right now, I, I can only say <laughs> better than my, my circumstances. So that's yeah. so beautiful that God, and we'll talk about the mercy of God, that God punished us less than our iniquities. Mm -hmm. Because when we think about what God did to the Amorites, the Amalekites, the Philistines, the Geshashites, all the shai shai shai, all the ites, <laughs> God emptied them. That when he came to the children of Israel, even though he will use the Philistines to punish them, he would draw the, he would, he would bring the children of Israel back and then punish the Philistines. So, okay, okay I told you to punish my Jews. Well, why did you have to do it like that? <laughs> They'll be like, ah, uh, God, what's up? You are the one that sent us to. Nebuchadnezzar went and said, it is God that is telling me to come. But then when he went too far, God punished him. Anywhere, listen, you may be going through right now, God will punish the person that he's, he's using to punish you. If they don't punish you the way God said, because there's a, there's a key of they, they themselves have to be, whatever they're doing have to be in line with the word of God. If they step out of the word of God, when God punish them, their punishment will be more than we, because yes. we are called by his name. So I just so love it. That's extra. So if you're out there, look at extra 913. Let that one give you comfort because we receive comfort from the word of God. And I love also, he kept saying, you know, when we went through, that's why I brought it back to the book of Ezra. Because if you, what we read from Malachi, uh, Zephaniah, you, um, you can see all the, you hear Zerubbabel back here in Ezra. I said, okay. So you will know that the word of God is flowing. It's the same that he kept saying on that day, and if you're out there, that day is coming. On that day, he kept saying on that day, he kept saying on the last day, there is a day that is coming. Oh, Are you yeah. ready? And he's talking about the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. People are asking for the day of the Lord. He said the day of the Lord is going to be darkness. It's, 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 it's a tough day. It's going to be a day. It's not a day where people are happy, you know, happy and joyful. Uh -uh -uh. The day of the judgment of the Lord don't come with that. It's just like when your parents want to give you the judgment that you deserve. It's, it's, it's not, you're not going to be happy and smiling when they bring the switch to switch you for what you have done. So when God is here to switch us for what we have done, it's not a, it's not a happy day. But one thing that is sure is that the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord must come. It will come. If the Bible kept saying on that day, on that day, and most of the days have not come yet. And then the day of the Lord. So it's just so, I'm so happy though, 
that in, on that day, in that day, what's going to happen is our punishment is less than what we deserve. Amen. That is the mercy of God. And you know, when Sister Cynthia was reading that last um, extra, I was like, oh my God, God has a record in heaven. Oh. You're saying, and this person and their family, this person and this and this person, all these names are calling is telling us because in Revelation, it say the books were open. Okay. The books will be open. God has a record yes. of the life that you and I are living. So that's why it's important that we strive we strive to live the life that is pleasing unto God. And we cannot really do it without the Holy Spirit. For Jesus said, don't go anywhere. Wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll be empowered to be my witness. That's how to live the life of God. You'll be a witness. The words that I speak, my deeds, my actions, and all of us are work in progress. We just need to yield ourselves to that Holy Spirit so you can help us. You see, I always tell people, I say, this bottle, is water, right? If I pour this water out and put this peanut in it, what changes the, this bottle from being a bottle of water is the content. Once I pour this water out and put a peanut in it, it's no water bottle. It becomes a peanut bottle. If I pour the peanut out and put oil in it, it becomes an oil bottle. You want to be holy without the Holy Spirit? It's not possible. You can't do it. The only way you and I can be holy is if we let the Holy Ghost fill us and then we become holy. It is not by the works that we do. You and I cannot walk the walk. It says whatever we do, they are filthy rags. That's what they are. So our works is not it, but the Holy Ghost in us. That's the difference between when I give something and when an unbeliever gives something. I give something because of the Holy Ghost in me. So my giving is holy. My giving is not, I'm not doing, I'm not just doing good like the unbeliever. But my doing, my good doing is a holy doing because the Holy Ghost in me is one that is doing the work. That's what Jesus said. He said, all this thing I'm doing is not me. It is the Father in me that doeth the work. It is the Father in me that is saying the word. So let's, let's, let's come back to God. And I think I wrote that um, Micah 6. I got to go back to Micah. Micah 6. Micah 6, because this is also important for us as we are walking with the Lord, yes. Micah 6, 8, and we go back to Zephaniah 2, 3, and 8, 7. It was talking about to do justice. And these are the things that, that you know, I'm celebrating God today. To do justice to, and to love kindness and to walk humbly. God was showing us all of this as we're reading, and it's just so beautiful that to do justice to that's what that's what even um daniel told nebuchadnezzar before god put, make you a, a, a animal nebuchadnezzar this is what i want you to do these are my suggestions you know you're the king you're the gold but listen maybe if you do this and do this maybe god maybe god so we celebrate god today because god is not punishing us as we deserve we're celebrating god today because the day of the lord is coming and that is our comfort. The king today will die tomorrow. Everything we see here is, is everything the world will pass away. Yes. Everything will pass away. All we are now are seeing. We will all die. We will all pass away. The only thing that is that will endure forever is God. In the beginning, he was. In the end, he will be. So let's follow God today. So join us again. It's just been a privilege and honor to come to you on pulpit hours. I want to thank Sister Tina. I want to thank Brother Mikey. I want to thank Sister Cynthia and all of you out there who are listening right now and who are going to be listening tomorrow, the next one year, if the Lord tarries, amen. Just let's continue in the word. This is why pulpit hour is here, is to, you know, ginger us to dig into the word and know that without the word, we cannot survive. And people always tell me everything should not be about the Bible. But as for me, you know, I don't know about you, but as for me, everything is about the Bible because the word was, the, this world we see was created by God, the word of God. So yes. that is why we have, everything must always go back. They say, why, why must everything go back to God? I say, because in the beginning it was God and mm -hmm. everything we see was created by God. I was created by his word. <laughs> so, sorry, he has to go back to God. So let's go back to God. God is calling us to repentance. Okay. 
he's calling us to the place you see he was saying people come back come back come back return to me i'll return to you so god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you people let's do this again we need more people to publish the word of god dm mm -hmm. me say i want to be a part of this list if it's just one chapter you can publish instead of using your mouth to curse and to fight and to gossip and to stay on the phone and to know to just be shouting on the tv you're walking, watching soccer you shout more watching soccer you cannot shout for the word of god i don't know this is the time opportunity that we have. The Bible says that he sent his word. He says, great was the company of those that published it. He sent his commandments. Great was the multitude of those. So we need great multitude to help publish this word of God. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. And I am just so privileged that God is doing this through us. And thank you. And of course, I want to thank Zoom for that platform. And I want to thank Facebook. God bless you, my brother Zuckerberg. Amen. And of course, I want to thank YouTube too. Hallelujah, because the word of God must cover the earth. God gave them wisdom and they gave us the platform. We're using it for his glory. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.